Let's start off by saying Barakat the Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Chakudash. Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is fornication, adultery, whoremonger. And uh, you have this uh, teaching out in the churches that whoremonger. A, a whoremonger is uh, somebody who who uh, gets prostitutes, you know, or somebody that actually a whoremonger is. Uh, they say that somebody that you know sleeps around with you know different women. Um, you know, they give that sense of of the uh, of the word, and that's what they say it means. It means you know having sex outside of wedlock. Or, um, excuse me, or, um, dealing with, um, uh, dealing with more than one woman, um, you know, so they'll say that that's fornication, you know, but the scriptures are very plain as to what fornication is, and this is why it's important to understand what you read. Now, um, I'm just trying to get this one preset before we get started. Uh, let me bring this over here. <laughs> Fornication is pretty much is adultery. Fornication and adultery are synonymous. Now, there are times where fornication can be applied to spiritual adultery. You know, when you're bound down to idols in that case. Yes, that is also fornication or adultery, you know, and, um, and, um, you know, in this lesson, Lord, so we can get into a little bit of that and go into the word whoremonger <clears throat> and, um, you know, just break that down because this is a, like a stumbling block to these people out there. And then when you try to break it down to them, they really don't want to hear, but this is just for the ones that are interested in learning. Um, uh, good morning to you too, sister. Uh, shalom to the Akim on the comment board, you know, and the, and the Akwath, Shalom. Uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 1, it says, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. All right, so let's highlight this. And such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. So what is that? If, if if a father, if a man who is uh, who has a son, if he's a, he's a father, and he has a wife, and with this wife they have a son, right? Which would be his father, the son's father, and the son's mother, and then that son grows up and has sex with his mother. What is that? That's adultery. You know, and vice versa. You know, if a, if a, if a father has a woman. The son is not supposed to lie with that woman. If a son has a woman, the father is not supposed to lie with that woman. Okay, that's adultery. Straight up adultery. So, they just happen to use the word fornication here instead of just putting the word adultery, which is which is what, what really it is. Now, when we look up this word fornication, matter of fact, before I go into that, no, you know what, let's go into the word. Let's go into the word. And then uh, I can, I can uh, hopefully squeeze that other scripture in there. And pretty much, adultery is when a man lays down with a married woman. If a man has ten women, and none of those women are married to any other man, he is not committing adultery. He is not committing fornication. Because fornication is adultery. So we get the word adult um, fornication is porneia. Right, so you have the word pornea. It says illicit sexual intercourse, which you could apply it to that, but but it's this is vague. Then it says adultery, and this is exactly what it is: is adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism. That intercourse with animals that doesn't fall under that, under adultery. That's not adultery. Okay, sexual intercourse with close relatives. You could use that as far as if, uh, um, if it's. An adulterous act. Okay. 
Because you're not supposed to deal with your close relatives, but that doesn't fall under adultery or fornication. You know, uh, sexual intercourse with a divorced man or woman. Nope, it's a it's sexual intercourse with a divorced woman or with a woman that still has a man. Okay, a man can have as many women as he wants. As long as that woman or women are not married to anyone else. Because when a woman is married to a man, they're bonded for life. Okay? And then here, here's where we uh, get into the metaphorics. The worship of idols. And yes, fornication or, or, or spiritual fornication or spiritual adultery is the worshiping of idols. Of the defilement of idolatry as incurred by eating the sacrifices offered to idols. Yes, so fornication or adultery can fall under this. That's That would be spiritual adultery. All right? So... Now what we're going to do is hit this other precept, Galatians 5 and 19. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, which is what? Having sex with a married woman. All right. Then it says fornication. Now why does it separate adultery and fornication? Because this fornication is dealing with idolatry. You know, which you have idolatry over here also. So fornication is idolatry. I'm sorry, uh, it could be idolatry. As it as it's, uh, says down here, idolatry. So fornication and idolatry is the same thing. Uh, fornication and adultery is the same thing. You know, but these people in the in the churches have a different um, definition for that word. All right, let matter of fact, let's let's see what it says in Google. Fornication, sexual intercourse between people not married to each other. Yeah, that's what they say. That's not what that's not what fornication is. You know, that's what they say it means. But whenever you ha whenever a man has sex with a woman, if that woman is not married uh, to another man, that that woman becomes that man's wife. As in the case of uh, Genesis, the twenty fourth chapter, someone did. <clears throat> I believe it was a. Uh, the elder or the up and coming elder Yahawada from uh, Hawaii, he uh, did a lesson. I believe that was him that did the lesson on marriage and all that. And um, you had IUIC teaching that um, yeah, you had IUIC teaching that sex is not marriage. Well, that's that's ludicrous. That's that's bullshit. You know, sex is marriage because uh, no, they want to address the. Um, this uh, scripture in uh, Genesis, the 24th chapter, dealing with when Isaac saw Rebecca, he went into her. He just had sex with her. You know, he didn't, uh, uh, they didn't get a, a marriage proposal. He didn't get on his un unbended knee and give her a ring. And then they invited everybody to, to a, a, a wedding, you know, but you did have weddings. But the actual um, union of a man and woman is not. Um, cemented until the act of sex is uh, implemented. Matter of fact, even in the uh, uh, Zondervan's Bible Dictionary, when you look up the word marriage, you know, in the, in the Zondervan's Bible Dictionary, let me see if I can find it. When you look up the word marriage, let's see if I can find it. Just bear with me one second. Marriage, right? It says here, marriage is an intimate union. Uh, I'm sorry, marriage is an intimate personal union to which a man and woman consent, consummated and continuously see consummated and continuously nourished by sexual intercourse. So it's consummated. So how do you consummate something? That that is the act that cements the deal. Uh, so like I spelled it wrong, consummate, was two M's. It says, make a marriage or relationship complete by having sexual intercourse. So marriage is sex because marriage is the consummation. All right, process. So when Isaac took Rebecca, he popped her, she became his wife. It says, it tells you that, you know, I don't see what the big deal is with these, with these uh, Israelite, you know. Israelites out here, these different groups that that are that are semi Hebrew Israelites, semi Christians. All right, so adultery, 
is fornication. Fornication, in certain cases, is dealing with idolatry. Uh, so this is this is it here, adultery, fornication. Um, so we we read through this. So let's keep on going through the um, the root words of um, fornication. So we got the next one is porneo, porneo. To prostitute one's body to the lust of another. So now we're getting into um, what the word whoremonger really means. And that's another thing. They, they said a whoremonger is some, a, a man that just has a voracious appetite and just, you know, has to have a, a whole lot of women. And I believe they're teaching that because they teach that you can only have one wife, which is total bullshit. It's, it's, that's totally against the scriptures. You know, now... You have men that have one wife and they're content with that, especially in these times, is, is rough. You have some men that don't have women, but you, if, if a man has more than one woman, as long as neither one of those women are married to anyone else, he's not going off. But these guys, they go contrary to what the scriptures say. But anyway, to prostitute one's body to the lust of another, to give oneself to unlawful sexual intercourse, uh, to commit fornication, which should be adultery, uh, metaphorically to be given to idolatry to worship idols. Yeah, you could use that as that. Permit oneself to be drawn away by another into idolatry. Yeah, that, that goes into the mer metaf metaphysical, or metaphoric, should I say. So to prostitute one's body to the lust of another. So keep that in mind when we go to the next one. <clears throat> Porne. It says, a woman who sells her body for sexual uses. A prostitute, a harlot. One who yields herself to defilement for the sake of gain. Any woman indulging in unlawful sexual intercourse, whether for gain or for lust. Metaphorically, an idolatrous, a Babylonian example, Rome, the chief seat of idolatry. So we're dealing with a woman who sells her body for sexual uses, or a prostitute, right? A, har a harlot, right? Uh, let's go to the next one. Pornos. You have pornos. A man who prostitutes his body to another's lust for hire. A male prostitute. Uh, a man who indulges in, in uh, unlawful sexual intercourse. A fornicator. There was something here. Whoremonger. All right. And we're going to get into that word whoremonger. All right. Uh, so let's get there real quick. Let's get the word definition for whoremonger. As, as they teach in these churches, whoremonger, a person who has dealings with prostitutes, especially a sexually promiscuous man. So they'll try to say that that's a man that has sex with a lot of women or a man that deals with prostitutes. No, that's not a whoremonger. Now let's go to the word whore, right? Whore, to have to do with whores, uh, let's go to whore. Whore, um, prostitute, harlot, all right? So a whore is a prostitute, okay? Now when we look up the word monger, right? Merchant, trader, broker, to traffic, trade. So a whore monger is one who sells whores, not one who has sex with uh, uh, harlots. It's one who sells whores. You have many different type of mongers, you know? You have fish mongers, you have... People that sell different things Right, a pimp, that's right A pimp is a whoremonger Now you have, in instances you have Something called a, a madam Or a mistress You know, and she is in charge Of making sure that they, that She gets paid for the services Of the women that are under her She would be a whoremonger A seller of whores Alright, not a man that Buys a prostitute Alright you know, it's it's just ridiculous the 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 uh, the um, the um, ignorance, you know, the blatant ignorance, or not so much as the ignorance sometimes, but the the uh, the um, emotion emotions of these men today. You know, oh, you buy a prostitute, ah. then then they'll try to bring out the scripture, uh, "Thou shalt not prostitute." The, uh, make a prostitute of the, of the daughters of, of uh, Israel or, or daughters of Zion or something like that That's not talking about that That's talking about cult prostitution Because you had the nations They would have certain uh, sexual 
rites that that would be practiced in the um in the uh uh in their temples you know where there was a uh, uh, man on woman woman on woman man on man that was called cult prostitute uh, prostitution that's what the scriptures speak about but not shall not make a whore or a sodomite out of the children of Israel you know so now let's go to spare with me let's go to our uh, second Second Maccabees real quick. The sixth chapter. And we'll start at the first verse. It says, Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of the Most High. This is dealing with Antiochus Epiphanes. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympius and that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they as they did desire that dwelt in the place. The coming of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people, for the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles, meaning they were partying, drinking, you know, act, doing acting a fool, who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. And besides that, they brought in things that were not lawful. So these women that were brought into the temples, into the temple, were prostitutes. You know, they were they were using these women to have sex with them in in a commemoration or in sacrifice to their gods. So this is what the scriptures mean in the law when it says, Thou shalt not have a prostitute or a sodomite of the children of Israel. You know, a cult prostitution. And that's what was going on in the book of Numbers, the 25th chapter. With the man that had sex with that uh, uh, woman. I'm, I don't remember if she was a Moabite or a Midianite. And Phinehas killed both of them. Because he didn't kill them because the man was having sex with a woman of another nation. He killed them because they were having sexual relations in commemoration of the God of, of those, those people at the time. There's a difference, you know. But you know, I mean... These, these people, they're going to get emotional. They're going to believe what they want to believe. They're not nah, a whoremonger. It's one that buys prostitutes. Hey, whatever. You know, continue in your ignorance. When we just read, whoremonger is a compound word. The word whore, we read, was a, a woman, a prostitute that sells her body. And then monger is a trader, a merchant, a seller. So you could understand. A dealer, trade, trader, slave dealer. You know, so you have slave mongers. Which is one that sells many slaves. You have whoremongers, a pimp, whether male or female, that sells uh, a women, you know, for gain, for for sexual use. All right. Then when we go to Ephesians five and five, it says, "For this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is a who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach and of the Most High." Now we look up the word whoremonger. Right? Where is it? Whoremonger. It goes back to the word pornos. <laughs> and what I want to show you here, a man man who prostitutes his body to another's lust for hire, a male prostitute, it goes both ways, male or female. But this is what I really wanted to get. The root word to this is peprasco, right? Peprasco is to sell of price, one into slavery. Of the master to whom one is sold as a slave, sold under sin, so to sell a price. So a whoremonger goes back to the word pornos, which goes back to the root word piprasco, which means to sell. Which we read the word monger in whoremonger is a seller, a dealer, a trader, you know, to displaying of wares. You have many different wares. A prostitute is a form of... Or, or aware, it's a commodity. Just like butter, just like gold, just like silver. You know, and everything is traded. Because the woman would give the man service for what? For money. And that money would usually go to the whoremonger or the pimp, whether male or female. And that's it, it's just that simple. It's not that hard. 
uh, GMS Hawaii says uh, adultery, which in ancient Israel involved a woman having sex outside of her marriage or a man having sex with another man's wife. That's it. It's just that simple. But when you start letting emotions fly, you know, you start, um, you know, getting in your feelings uh, because of, you know, the, the uh, Western mentality that you've been taught, you get all emotional, you know? And this is why the scriptures speak about, you know, you're not supposed to learn the way of the heathen. What was that? Is that uh, Jeremiah 10? Jeremiah 10 and 1. Uh, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed. So we're not to learn of the ways of the heathen. You know, uh, GMS Hawaii again. In ancient Israel, men uh, though, though could have multiple wives and concubines and were allowed to go to prostitutes, thus monogamy was a one-way street in this culture. That's right. You know, and no matter how many times you bring out, you know, the patriarch Yahweh, you know, he had, he had, a, he, he um, um, bought a prostitute. Um, Samson had prostitutes. Um, the Lord, the Heavenly Father himself told um, Hosea to go get him a, a hire a prostitute, he, which he had children with and everything. You know, so it's, it's. It's amazing how these guys, they'll just skip over scriptures like that. That's that emotional, you know, learning the way of the heathen mentality. You know, that's why, let's go real quick to Romans chapter 12. And one, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. What does it mean to be conformed to this world? Meaning to take take on the mindset of this world. Suskamatizo. To conform oneself, an example, one's mind and character to another's pattern. Fashion oneself according to. So we know that the scriptures say different. So why are you conforming to the reasonings and the thought pattern of this society, this Western world. When the scriptures are clear in what they're saying. But emotions and ignorance, you know, cloud cloud the judgment. And when we try to bring it out, oh, you guys, this, that, the other, you know. So whatever, man. Like I had this one woman trying to put a scripture, which I had blocked her anyway. She put a scripture, thou shalt not prostitute the daughters of, 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 uh, of Israel. And I explained to her what that meant. She said, yeah, I know, but and she said some other. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to block this chick, man, you know? Ain't got time to be playing with you women, especially on, on the comment board. This is a man thing, you know? But the point is you, you can't speak about certain things because people get emotional. Because they're conformed to this world. All right. Um, and let me get one more in the book of Exodus. I believe that's... 32, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, nope, it's 23, Exodus 23 and 32. It says, uh, Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. Yeah, so the Most High is very specific. It says, Learn not the way of the heathen. You know? Uh, let's see, let's see, get a couple of these and then we'll close out. Yeah, this is a good one. Uh, all right, let me read a couple of these. This is, uh, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, this is Genesis thirty eight fifteen. 15. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be in harlot. Yeah, because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What wilt thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? All right, so that was a deal. And he knew what he was getting into. 
uh, 1 Maccabee 1 and 11, in those days when they're out of Israel, wicked men who persuaded many, see? So there's a persuasion by these individuals uh, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us for since we departed from them, from them, we had we have had much sorrow. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 14, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. And our devices are but uncertain. That's right. The mighty warrior Jephthah, the Gileadite. Oh, wait a minute. The mighty warrior Jephthah, the Gileadite mother, was a prostitute. Yeah. You know? Let's see what else we got. Uh, second Ezra 14, 14. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Yep. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is. Uh, root of David. Matthew 11 and 6, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Yeah. And that's what that's what happens, man. You know, individuals, they let their emotions cloud judgment. You know, scriptures say the, the prudent looketh well to his going. It says, be not ignorant in any matter in a small or a great. You know, and you see, just by looking up a couple of words, going through a few precepts, looking up a couple of words, you know, this can be done by anybody, but... If the spirit is not working with them, they're not going to get it, you know. But this is all the way it is, you know. The Lord sets things up, you know, in controversy, you know, so that the ones that are not meant to get it won't get it. And it's just that simple, you know, because the Lord is, is, is the one that's doing, you know, doing this work. Getting these things popping, you know. Don't worry about it, brother. It's cool. I, I, I figured it out. Let's see. Psalms 119, 165, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Yeah. And when you read it, you know, there's, there, there's scriptures on, on all these things that these guys are saying not to do. And then you had Nate one time, who's that? Uh, Bishop Nathaniel, um, that tried to use this scripture. Let's get this real quick and we'll close it out. 1 Corinthians 6. And... Uh, Right here, 6 and 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Yahushai? Shall I then take the members of Yahushai and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid, see, you're not supposed to be dealing with harlots. This ain't talking about that, dog. This is talking about idolatry. It's talking about idolatry. It's not talking about an actual a harlot. That's why Yahushai said the harlots go into the kingdom before you do. Yeah, brother, yep, the West messes up, that's right. You know, that's why Yahweh just said the heart is going to the kingdom before you do. This is talking about, because he was dealing with a lot of, uh, uh, the, the, the Israelites that the Apostle Paul was teaching were all idolatrous. So he was telling them to get away from that. So it says, the most I forbid, what? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Yeah. So when you join yourself to, to those, uh, that's why it says also, let's get this one real quick, 1 Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians 10 and 20, but I say the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to the Most High, and I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord in the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. See? So that's what this is talking about. You know? Not an no, actual harlot. Come on, man. And then it goes on to say, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication, which is adultery. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But, the, uh, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Why? Because he commits adultery and he sins against his own body because you're going to be the, um, the sacrifice. It says what? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which you have of the Most High, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify the Most High in your body and in your spirit, which are the Most High's. Yeah. So don't be, uh, um, you know, uh, committing sacrilege. You know, going and uh, um, worshiping these different idols. And today, is, is, you know, you don't actually have, well, you do still have idols, but, you, but the idolatry today goes far beyond that. It goes into worshiping uh, uh, 
uh, people, you know, uh, worshiping at a, a, these uh, harlot houses called churches. You know, it's it's vast. It's, it's more intricate today than back then. Back then, they actually had figurines and, and uh, images that they would bow down to and praise as if they was the Most High. All right. Uh, so I think I think that's a pretty good uh, spot to stop at. You know, fornication, adultery, homemaker. You know, we could have went into a whole lot more, but I just wanted to bring out the, a few points on the on the uh, words themselves and what they mean to show you that you know this like the like the like the up and coming elder said, man, the West messed us up, man. Let's see. Uh, It says, some woman came on my comments board, comment board with that script to use against me talking about Harley's. Yeah, well, she she doesn't know what the hell that she's talking about. And that, it might have been the same one. And I blocked the ass, you know, and I explained to her that it was, that it was, uh, um, that it was talking about cult prostitution. And I think she was trying to say, yeah, well, that's what I'm talking about. Get the fuck out of here. You wasn't talking about that. You put that scripture out there because you put it on the, com uh, on the uh, comment board. Of the one that we, we uh, that Elder Apostle Gabar and myself did a, a word on prostitution, so you were trying to put that up there. You, you ain't supposed to have no prostitutes among Israel because that is what these simps that call themselves Israelites been pushing out there. You know about about uh, Israelite women being prostitutes. That's not what that's talking about. And Yahushua himself said that the heart is going to the kingdom before you. So you had prostitutes back then in in uh, during the time of Yahushua. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Fucking emotional ass twats, man, out there. Anyway, <laughs> oh Lord. So you know, with that, you know, I pray that your brothers have been edified. Until the next time, I say shalom.